The phonology of Navajo is intimately connected to its morphology. For example, the entire range of contrastive consonants is found only at the beginning of word stems. In stem final position and in prefixes, the number of contrasts is drastically reduced. Similarly, vowel contrasts including their prosodic combinatory possibilities found outside of the stem are significantly neutralized. Like most Athabascan languages, Navajo is coronal heavy, having many phonological contrasts at coronal places of articulation and less at other places. Also typical of the family, Navajo has a limited number of labial sounds, both in terms of its phonemic inventory and in their occurrence in actual lexical items and displays of consonant harmony. Consonants The consonant phonemes of Navajo are listed below. Topic phonetics All consonants are long, compared to English, with plain stops the hold is longer, with aspirated stops the aspiration is longer, and with affricates the frication is longer. The voice onset time of the aspirated and ejective stops is twice as long as that found in most non-Athabascan languages. Young and Morgan 1987 described Navajo consonants as doubled between vowels, but in fact they are equally long in all positions. Stops and affricates all stops and affricates, except for the bilabial and glottal, have a three-way laryngeal contrast between unaspirated, aspirated, and ejective. The labials, p, m, are found in only a few words. Most of the contrasts in the inventory lie within coronal territory at the alveolar and palatoalveolar places of articulation. The aspirated stops t, k, orthographic t, k, are typically aspirated with velar frication t, x, k, x. They are phonetically affricates, homorganic in the case of k, x, heteroorganic in the case of t, x. The velar aspiration is also found on a labialized velar k, x, orthographic k, w. There is variation within Navajo, however, in this respect, some dialects lack strong velar frication having instead a period of aspiration. An aspirated p occurs only in loanwords, for instance Mississippi per meter sspi grave, from English Mississippi. Similarly the unaspirated velar, k, orthographic g is realized as with optional voiced velar frication following the stop burst, k, tilde, k. The unaspirated lateral, t, orthographic dl typically has a voiced lateral release, t, of a duration comparable to the release of the, k, and much shorter than the unaspirated fricatives, ts, t. However, the aspirated and ejective laterals are true fricatives. While the aspiration of stops is markedly long compared to most other languages, the aspiration of the affricates is quite short. The main feature distinguishing ts and t from ts and t is that the frication is half again as long in the latter. ts, t, t is similarly long, t. The adjectives ts, t, t, on the other hand, have short frication, presumably due to the lack of pulmonic airflow. There is a period of near silence before the glottalized onset of the vowel. In t, there may be a double glottal release, or a creaky onset to the vowel not found in the other ejective affricates. Continuants Navajo voiceless continuants are realized as fricatives. They are typically noisier than the fricatives that occur in English. The palato alveolars are not labialized unlike English and other European languages. Navajo also does not have consistent phonetic voicing in the voiced continuant members. Although, z, l, are described as voiced in impressionist descriptions, data from spectrograms shows that they may be partially devoiced during the constriction. In stem initial position, l, tends to be fully voiced, has a slight tendency to be voiceless near the offset, z, is often mostly voiceless with phonetic voicing only at the onset, is also only partially voiced with voicing at onset. A more consistent acoustic correlate of the voicing is the duration of the consonant. Voiceless consonants have longer durations than voiced consonants. Based on this, McDonough 2003 argues that the distinction is better captured with the notion of a fortis lenus contrast. A further characteristic of voicing in Navajo is that it is marginally contrastive. See the voicing assimilation section. Navajo lacks a clear distinction between phonetic fricatives and approximants. Although the pair Tilde L has been described as a fricative and an approximant, respectively, the lack of a consistent contrast between the two phonetic categories and a similar patterning with other fricative pairs suggests that they are better described as continuants. Additionally, observations have been made about the less fricative-like nature of and the more fricative-like nature of J. 
Sonorants a more abstract analysis of Navajo posits two different J phonemes. See the below for elaboration. The glottalized sonorants are the result of D effect on the non glottalized counterparts. A strict structuralist analysis, such as that of Hoyer and Sapper and Hoyer, considers them phonemic. Glottal consonants, consonants involving a glottal closure, the glottal stop, ejective stops, and the glottalized sonorants, may have optional creaky voice on voiced sounds adjacent to the glottal gesture. Glottal stops may also be realized entirely as creaky voice instead of single glottal closure. Adjectives in Navajo differ from the adjectives in many other languages in that the glottal closure is not released near simultaneously with the release of the oral closure as is common in other languages, it is held for a significant amount of time following oral release. The glottalized sonorants per meter, n, are articulated with a glottal stop preceding the oral closure with optional creaky voice during the oral closure, m tilde m, n tilde n. Labialized consonants Consonants K, X, H, are predictable variants that occur before the rounded oral vowel, O. However, these sounds also occur before the vowels, I, E, A, where they contrast with their non-labialized counterparts, K, X, H. <laughs> Velar, palatal, J The phonological contrast between the velar obstruent and the palatal glide, j, is neutralized in certain contexts. However, in these contexts, they may often be distinguished from each other by their different phonological patterning. Before the rounded, o, is phonetically strongly labialized as, elsewhere, it lacks the labialization. As noted above, the lenus continuance like, are often very weak fricatives somewhere between a typical fricative constriction e.g., and a more open approximant constriction e.g. This will be symbolized here as Hoyer a describes the realization as being similar to English w but differing in having slight frication at the beginning of the articulation. The realization before a varies between an approximant and a weakly fricated approximant. The following verb stem has different velar allophones of the stem initial consonant. The palatal glide, j, is also phonetically between an approximant j and a fricative. Hoyer a compares it to English j with a slight but audible rubbiness or frication. The contrast between velar and palatal, j, is found before both back vowels, a, o, as the following contrasts demonstrate. Before the front vowels, i, e, however, the contrast between and j is neutralized to a palatal articulation much like the weakly fricative j realization of j that occurs before back vowels. However, the underlying consonant can be ascertained in verb stems and noun stems via their different realizations in a voiceless i.e. fortis context. The underlying velar surfaces is a voiceless palatal fricative c in these environments. The stem initial velar of the noun stem, x e acute, has a voiceless fortis realization of c as c cedilla e acute when word initial. When intervocalic, it is realized as lenus j as j e acute l. Likewise, the underlying velar of the verb stem, x, is a voiceless c after the preceding voiceless, and lenus j when intervocalic. Thus, the alternation of c tilde j in the two contexts is indicative of an underlying velar consonant. Similarly before the back vowels, the velar continuant has the alternations x -tilde and x -tilde as shown in the examples below. An underlying palatal, j, can be determined by alternations which differ from the velar alternations. However, j, has two different alternation patterns which have led to the positing of two distinct phonemes. Incidentally, the two different phonemes are also connected to two different reconstructed consonants in Proto-Athabascan. One of these, j, phonemes is considered an obstruent as it has a fricative realization of s in fortis contexts. It is often symbolized as a palatalized or front velar fricative, in Americanist phonetic notation and as a reflex of Proto-Athabascan asterisk x. It may be considered coronal because of its coronal voiceless allophone. In the above examples, the fortis realization is s in the stems sn, sa tilde, so acute t, while the lenus realization is the glide j in the corresponding jn, ja tilde, jo acute t. Since the fortis reflex of this phoneme is s, there is also a neutralization between this j phoneme and the alveolar s phoneme. 
The alveolar phoneme has a s -tilde -z alternation in fortis lenis contexts. Thus, the different alternations also distinguish between underlying j and underlying s. The other underlying or morphophonemic palatal j is considered a sonorant and has an invariant j realization in both fortis voiceless and lenis voiced contexts. This phoneme is relatively rare, occurring in only a few morphemes. It is a reflex of Proto-Athabascan asterisk y as symbolized in Americanist notation. Two examples are below. A further distinction between the different phonemes are found in the context of D effect. The varying contextual realizations of these three underlying segments are summarized in the following table. Topic: <laughs> Voicing assimilation. The voiced continuants z, l at the beginning of stems vary with their voiceless counterparts s, x respectively. The voiceless variants occur when preceded by voiceless consonants, such as s, h, while the voiced variants occur between voiced sounds, typically intervocalically. For example, the verb stems meaning spit it out, be burning, spit, and be ticklish have the following forms with alternating voiced and voiceless stem initial consonants. Since the voicing is predictable, it can be represented more abstractly as an underlying consonant that is underspecified with respect to voicing. These archiphonemes can be indicated with the capital letters, Z, L. The variant voicing of the stem initial consonant can be found in the context of subject person prefixes which are added to the verb stem. As the above examples show, the stem initial consonant is voiced when intervocalic and voiceless when it is preceded by a voiceless shish first person singular subject prefix or a voiceless h in the o, o two person dual subject prefix. Another example of contextual voicing of verb stem initial consonants occurs when a voiceless l classifier prefix occurs before the stem as in the following In the verb form ti grave lza acute s dealzaz we too dribble it along, the z occurs between a voiced l and the voiced stem vowel a acute. Thus it is realized as a voiced z. Here the classifier is voiced due to the d effect of the preceding Vermont first person dual subject prefix. In the other verb forms, the stem initial z is preceded by voiceless classifier which results in a voiceless realization of s. In the surface verb forms, the underlying classifier is not pronounced due to a phonotactic restriction on consonant clusters. The initial consonant of noun stems also display contextual voicing. Here an intervocalic context is created by inflecting the noun sod, lid, shaj, hosh with a p by third person prefix which ends in a vowel. In this context, the stem initial consonant is voiced. When these nouns lack a prefix, in which case the stem initial consonant is word initial, the realization is voiceless. However, in some noun stems, the stem initial continuant does not voice when intervocalic, a grave h, ashi, salt. Topic: Dorsal place assimilation. The dorsal consonants k, 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 x, written g, k, k, h, g, h, have contextual phonetic variants, i.e., allophones, varying along place of articulation that depend on the following vowel environment. They are realized as palatals before the front vowels i and e, and as velars before the back vowels a and o. Additionally, they are labialized before the rounded back vowel o. This likewise happens with the velar frication of the aspirated t. Topic: <coronal>, coronal harmony. Navajo has coronal sibilant consonant harmony. Alveolar sibilants in prefixes assimilate to post-alveolar sibilants in stems, and post-alveolar prefixal sibilants assimilate to alveolar stem sibilants. For example, the C state of perfective is realized as C or SHI depending upon whether the stem contains a post-alveolar sibilant. For example, while CIDO it is hot perfective has the first form, SHIBES it is boiled perfective, the stem final triggers the change to D effect A particular type of morphophonemic alternation or mutation occurring in Athabascan languages called de effect is found in Navajo. The alternation in most cases is a fortition or strengthening process. 
The initial consonant of a verb stem alternates with a strengthened consonant when it is preceded by a t orthographic d classifier prefix or the Vermont first person dual subject prefix. The underlying t of these prefixes is absorbed into the following stem. D effect can be viewed prosodically as the result of a phonotactic constraint on consonant clusters that would otherwise result from the concatenation of underlying segments. There is thus an interaction between a requirement for the grammatical information to be expressed in the surface form and an avoidance of having sequences of consonants see the syllable section for more on phonotactics. The fortition is typically a change from continuant to affricate or continuant to stop i.e. adding a period of closure to the articulation. However, other changes involve glottalization of the initial consonant. The two occurrences of T plus J in the chart above reflect two different patterns of D effect involving stem initial, J. Often different underlying consonants are posited to explain the different alternation. The first alternation is posited as a result of underlying T plus, leading to a D effect mutation of, DZ. The other is T plus J resulting in, J, see the velar, palatal, j, section for further explanation. Another example of d effect influences not the stem initial consonant but the classifier prefix. When the, Vermont, first person dual subject prefix precedes the, orthographic l, classifier prefix, the, classifier is realized as voiced l. Topic. Other n greater than high tone Expressive X clusters. Topic Vowels. Navajo has four contrastive vowel qualities: i, e, o, at three different vowel heights: high, mid, low, and a front-back contrast between the mid vowels: e, o. There are also two contrastive vowel lengths and a contrast in nasalization. This results in 16 phonemic vowels, shown below. There is a phonetic vowel quality difference between the long high vowel, i, orthographic e, and the short high vowel, i, orthographic i. The shorter vowel is significantly lower at than its long counterpart. This phonetic difference is salient to native speakers, who will consider a short vowel at a higher position to be a mispronunciation. Similarly, short e is pronounced short o is a bit more variable and more centralized, covering the space tilde. Notably, the variation in o does not approach u, which is a true gap in the vowel space. Although the nasalization is contrastive in the surface phonology, many instances of nasalized vowels can be derived from a sequence of vowel plus nasal consonant in a more abstract analysis. Additionally, there are alternations between long and short vowels that are predictable. There have been a number of somewhat different descriptions of Navajo vowels, which are conveniently summarized in McDonough 2003. Topic. Acoustic phonetics McDonough 2003 has acoustic measurements of the formants of Navajo long and short vowel pairs as pronounced by ten female and four male native speakers. Below are the median values of the first F1 and second F2 formants for this study. An earlier study McDonough, Latifoged and George 1993 has measurements from seven female speakers. Topic. Tones Navajo has two tones, high and low. Orthographically, high tone is marked with an acute accent A acute over the affected vowel, while low tone is left unmarked A. This reflects the tonal polarity of Navajo, as syllables have low tone by default. Long vowels normally have level tones A acute A acute, A. Ah. However, in grammatical contractions and in Spanish loan words such as bizo money from Spanish peso, long vowels may have falling a or rising a acute tones. The sonorant, n, also carries tone when it is syllabic. Here again, the high tone is marked with an acute while the low tone is left unmarked n. Even though low tone is the default, these syllables are not underspecified for tone, they have a distinct phonetic tone, and their pitch is not merely a function of their environment. This contrasts with the related carrier language. As in many languages, however, the pitches at the beginnings of Navajo vowels are lower after voiced consonants than after tenuous and aspirated consonants. After ejective consonants, only high tones are lowered, so that the distinction between high and low tone is reduced. 
However, the type of consonant has little effect on the pitch in the middle of the vowel, so that vowels have characteristic rising pitches after voiced consonants. The pitch of a vowel is also affected by the tone of the previous syllable, in most cases, this has as great an effect on the pitch of a syllable as its own tone. However, this effect is effectively blocked by an intervening aspirated consonant. Tonological processes Navajo nouns are simple, k, 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 fire, pi, t, piti, bideal, his blood. Most long nouns are actually diverbal. In verbs, with few exceptions, only stems may carry a high tone, c, v, c, t. Prefixes are mostly single consonants, c, and do not carry tone. The one exception is the high tone vocalic prefix, n. Most other tone-bearing units in the Navajo verb are second stems or clitics. All Navajo verbs can be analyzed as compounds, and this greatly simplifies the description of tone. There are two obligatory components, the I stem for inflection and the V stem for verb, each potentially bearing a high tone, and each preceded by its own prefixes. In addition, the compound as a whole takes agreement prefixes like the prefixes found on nouns. This entire word may then take proclitics, which may also carry tone. Hyphens, mark prefixes, double hyphens equals mark clitics, and plus signs plus join compounds. Any high tones on clitics and the prefix, n, spread to the next syllable of the word. This spreading is blocked by long vowels, as can be seen with the iterative clitic, na. Compare Per hectare ni plus, t t. Hanit t. Hanishchedand. Hn ni plus, t t. Hn nit t. Hananishchad, where the clitic n equals creates a high tone on the following syllable, but n a acute i t plus l z e acute h. n i t l z e acute h. Nails a where it does not. Conjunct prefixes in verb stems are unmarked for tone with a few exceptions. They assimilate to the tones of neighboring prefixes. Tones in disjunct prefixes and stems are underlying specified. Certain enclitics like the subordinator equals go affect the tones of preceding verb stems. Topic: <laughs> syllable. Stems the stems e.g. noun stems, verb stems, etc. have the following syllable types c v t c that is, all syllables must have a consonant onset c, a vowel nucleus v the syllable may carry a high tone t, the vowel nucleus may be short or long, and there may optionally be a consonant coda. Prefixes. Prefixes typically have a syllable structure of c v, such as c h i acute out horizontally. Exceptions to this are certain verbal prefixes, such as the classifiers l, l, d, that occur directly before the verb stem, which consist of a single consonant c. A few other verbal prefixes, such as na around on the outer left edge of the verb have long vowels, c, v, v. A few prefixes have more complex syllable shapes, such as hashed e ready, c, v, c, c, v. Prefixes do not carry tone. Some analyses, such as that of Harry Hoyer, consider conjunct verbal prefixes to have the syllable shape cv. In other generative analyses, the same prefixes are considered to have only underlying consonants of the shape c. Then, in certain environments, an epithetic vowel, the default vowel is i, is inserted after the consonantal prefix. Topic: <laughs> Peg elements, segment insertion. All verbs must be disyllabic. Some verbs may only have a single overt nonsyllabic consonantal prefix or a prefix lacking an onset, or no prefix at all before the verb stem. Since all verbs are required to have two syllables, a meaningless prefix must be added to the verb to fulfill the disyllabic requirement. This prosodic prefix is known as a peg element in Athabascan terminology Edward Sapper used the term pepit vowel. For example, the verb meaning, she, he, they is, are crying has the following morphological composition, o o cha where both the imperfective modal prefix and the third person subject prefix are phonologically null morphemes and the verb stem is cha. 
In order for this verb to be complete a yi peg element must be prefixed to the verb stem, resulting in the verb form yicha. Another examples are verb yishcha I'm crying, which is morphologically o shish cha o null imperfective modal, shish first person singular subject, cha verb stem and wo cha you two plus are crying, which is o o cha o null imperfective modal, o second person dual plural subject, cha verb stem. The glide consonant of the peg element is y before i, w before o, and gh before a. Topic notes. Topic bibliography. Hoyer, Harry, 1942. Phonetic and phonemic change in the Athapaskan languages. Language 18, 218-220. DOI 10.2307/409555. Hoyer, Harry. 1945A. Navajo Phonology. University of New Mexico Publications in Anthropology, Number no. One, Albuquerque. The University of New Mexico Press. Johnson, Keith. 2003. Acoustic and Auditory Phonetics, Second Ed. Malden, MA: Blackwell Publishing. McDonough, Joyce. 2003. The Navajo Sound System. Dordrecht: Kluwer Academic Publishers. ISBN 1-4020-1351-5. McDonough, Joyce. Latifoged, Peter. 1993. Navajo Stops. UCLA Working Papers in Phonetics, 84-151-164 McDonough, Joyce, Latifoged, Peter, George, H. Navajo Vowels and Universal Phonetic Tendencies. University of California Working Papers in Phonetics, 84-143-150 Reichard, Gladys A. 1945. Linguistic Diversity Among the Navajo Indians. International Journal of American Linguistics, 11 to 156 minus 168. DOI 10.1086/463866. Reichard, Gladys A. 1967. Phonology and Morphology of the Navajo Language. Berkeley, University of California Press. Spees, Margaret. 1990. Phrase Structure in Natural Language. Dordrecht, Kluwer Academic Publishers. Spees, Margaret. 1985. Navajo Prefixes and Word Structure Typology. MIT Working Papers in Linguistics, Cambridge, 6 to 86 minus 111. Wright, Martha. 1983. The CV Skeleton and Verb Prefix Phonology in Navajo. Proceedings of Nels 14, Amherst. Young, Robert W., Morgan, William Sr. 1987, the Navajo Language, A Grammar and Colloquial Dictionary Rev. Ed. Albuquerque, University of New Mexico Press, ISBN 0-8263-1014-1. Further reading Cook, Ung Du, and Rice, Karen. 1989. Introduction. In E.D. Cook and K. Rice, eds. Athapaskan Linguistics: Current Perspectives on a Language Family, pp. 1 to 61. Berlin: Mouton de Gruyter. Heiley, Berard, 1941 to 1948. Learning Navajo, Vols. 1 to 4. St. Michael's, AS, St. Michael's Mission. Hale, Kenneth, 1970 to 1972. Navajo Linguistics Nose, 1 to 4, unpublished manuscript, available online, www.swathmore.edu slash soxi slash tfernal 1 slash endless slash halerch slash halerch dot htm closing parenthesis. Hardy, Frank W. 1979. Navajo Aspectual Verb Stem Variation. Doctoral Dissertation, University of New Mexico. Harris, Zelig S. 1945. Navajo Phonology and Hoyer's Analysis. International Journal of American Linguistics, 11 4, 239-246 Hoyer, Harry, 1938. The Southern Athapaskan Languages. American Anthropologist, 40 1, 75-87. Hoyer, Harry, 1943. Pitch Accent in the Apachean Languages. Language, 19 38-41. Hoyer, Harry, 1945b. Review of the Story of the Navajo Hale Chant by Gladys A. Reichard. 
International Journal of American Linguistics, 11 123–125. Hoyer, Harry, 1953. Review of Navajo Grammar by Gladys A. Reichard. International Journal of American Linguistics, 19 78–83. Hoyer, Harry, 1970. A Navajo Lexicon. University of California Publications in Linguistics No. 78. Berkeley, University of California Press. Carey, James, 1975. The Disjunct Boundary in the Navajo and Tanana Verb Prefix Complexes. International Journal of American Linguistics, 41, 330-345. Carey, James, 1976. Navajo Verb Prefix Phonology. Garland Publishing Co. Krauss, Michael E. Review of the Phonology and Morphology of the Navajo Language by Edward Sapper and Harry Hoyer. International Journal of American Linguistics, 36 220–228. Krauss, Michael E., and Lear, Jeff, 1981. Athabascan, Aic, and Tlingit Sonorants. Alaska Native Language Center Research Papers No. 5. Fairbanks, Alaska, University of Alaska, Alaska Native Language Center. Latifoged, Peter, and Madison, Ian, 1996. The Sounds of the World's Languages. Oxford, Blackwell. Lear, Jeff, 1979. Proto-Athabascan Verb Stem Variation I. Phonology. Alaska Native Language Center Research Papers No. 1. Fairbanks, Alaska, Alaska Native Language Center. McDonough, Joyce, 1990. Topics in the Morphology and Phonology of Navajo Verbs, Doctoral Dissertation, University of Massachusetts Amherst. McDonough, Joyce, 1996. A Penthesis in Navajo. In E. Jelinek, S. Majet, L. Saxon, and K. Rice, eds. Athabascan Language Studies, Essays in Honor of Robert W. Young, pp. 235-257. Albuquerque, University of New Mexico Press. McDonough, Joyce, 1999. Tone in Navajo. Anthropological Linguistics, 41 4, 503-539. McDonough, Joyce, and Austin Garrison, M. Vowel Enhancement and Dispersion in the Navajo Vowel Space. University of California Working Papers in Phonetics, 87, 105-113. McDonough, Joyce, and Latifoged, Peter, 1996. The Specification of Stop Contrasts in Navajo. In M. Nesper and I. Vogel, eds. Dam Phonology, Hill Phonology Papers 2, pp. 123-142. Holland Institute of Linguistics Publications. Platero, Paul R. 1986. Dine Bazad B. Nadzo, A Conversational Navajo Text for Secondary Schools, Colleges and Adults. Farmington, New Mexico, Navajo Preparatory School. Platero, Paul R., Lega, Laureen, and Platero, Linda S. Dine Bazad B. Na Adzo, A Navajo Language Literacy and Grammar Text. Farmington, New Mexico, Navajo Language Institute. Reichard, Gladys A. Reply to Hoyer's Review of the Story of the Navajo Hail Chant. International Journal of American Linguistics, 13 3, 193-196. Reichard, Gladys A. 1948. Significance of Aspiration in Navajo. International Journal of American Linguistics, 14, 1, 15 19. Reichard, Gladys A. 1951. Navajo Grammar. Publications of the American Ethnological Society, Vol. 21. New York, J. J. Augustine. Rice, Karen, 1997. A Re Examination of Proto Athabascan Y. Anthropological Linguistics, 39 423-436. Sapper, Edward, and Hoyer, Harry, 1942. Navajo Texts. William Dwight Whitney Series, Linguistic Society of America. Seville, Muriel, 1968. Navajo Morphophonemics. Doctoral Dissertation, University of Texas. Stanley, Richard, 1969. The Phonology of the Navajo Verb, Doctoral Dissertation, MIT. Witherspoon, Gary, 1985. Dine Bazad Bohu Ah for Secondary Schools, Colleges, and Adults. Farmington, New Mexico, Navajo Language Institute. Witherspoon, Gary, 1986. Dine Bazad Bohu Ah I, A Conversational Navajo Text for Secondary Schools, Colleges and Adults. 
Farmington, New Mexico, Navajo Language Institute.